The, the contempt they have for me is the contempt I have for this world and the things of this world. Yeah. Um, to love the Lord thy God. Yes, and the Lord wants me to be out here working, so um, this is the love our neighbor. We love our neighbor, but we, this world is coming to an end, and, um, and the things of it, and God is judging and destroying and uh, in the process of that even as we speak. And um, now it's time for us to fully give ourselves to him because our restless spirits, they're, um, everything we want, everything we need, the devil's a liar. He says, no, it's in this world. And uh, no, it's all in God and God alone. And, and, but he always is in our ear and he's in our head always. That's where my battleground is. And uh, he's always constantly, I even, I talk to him and I tell him, you're a liar straight to his face and do what, you know, if the Lord wants Satan to kill me again, um, you know, to, to put me through what I went through, which I'm going to tell you all testimony, my testimony, um, you know, it's worth it because worthy is the lamb who was slain. Yeah. To receive glory and honor and power and might and riches, dominion forever and ever. Amen. And uh, no matter what. Um, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord God. Well, let me tell you all my testimony. Um, so about three and a half weeks ago, I used to be a pizza, uh, work at Papa John's as a pizza delivery driver. I was making really good money. Um, it was my, one of my favorite jobs ever. But um, anyways, um, very healthy. I was in the Army. I was a veteran. Um, I run like five miles a day. Um, very healthy, drink plenty of water. I was drinking a lot of energy drinks kind of too, though. But nonetheless, God can take you no matter how healthy you are. It, just like you said, uh, any moment, like within one month, I died. So I suffered a heat stroke, um, and I was slowly dying, and I couldn't. Um, all my body, all my organs were shutting down and weren't working. And um, my body temperature went up to 106 degrees. And it, it's, it's your hyperthalamus. It's part of your brain um, as part of the heat stroke. Um, your brain suffers damage. Um, and the hybrid thalamus stopped working, so my body couldn't even control the temperature. And uh, that was also with the internal organs shutting down, and all my muscles are gone now. I used to be have a lot more weight on me than this. At least it weighed probably 30 more pounds. And um, anyways, I did die, and I knew the moment of my dying. Um, I was already praising the Lord all the, every day and every week because I knew it was, I was dying from this, and he, he told me that too. But um, I didn't ever knew I was saved, though. But I was still, no matter what, trusted in him. And was praying to him, and I did die. And as I was dying, I, you, you reached. I reached with my spirit. You know, if, if you die before, you'll you'll know what I mean. Because I was reaching with my spirit, and the Lord Jesus grabbed a hold of my arm. He saved me, and um, He even has a hold of me now, even at this moment. And I know for certain I have the Holy Spirit, spirit dwelling in me, yes. and I'm signed and sealed, uh, no matter what happens to me. Hallelujah. And the gates of hell will not prevail against the saints. Praise uh, God. That devil's a liar. He says, no, you aren't, you, you know, you're not saved. You know, he tells you that every day. That was my doubts. And I, I believe you might, some folks might not ever know that they're actually saved. But no matter what, when you die at that moment, just believe with all your heart and your soul, no matter what. And I believe, I was like, I didn't know for certain. I didn't have that seal in me before I died. But now I do. But before, I, I, was, I was reading the word, and I was in church, and I was praising the Lord, but I wasn't certain. But now I have total certainty, and that's praise why I, that's one of my praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, thank Lord you, God. thank you. Um, that's why I must. That's also part of my mission is to tell everybody that um, folks that are dying, you know, don't be afraid of death because even though you might not know for certain, even though a lot of people do know for certain, there's a lot of people that don't know for certain. Now you you are going to Argentina. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, the Lord has sent me on my first mission mission to Buenos Aires, Argentina, and I did not study any of this before it happened. The Lord gave me this, and uh, I looked up the pastor. His name's Pastor Ravel. Um, he doesn't even have a congreg. Uh, he has a, con- a big congregation for, it, but he only does online, and uh, he needs a church building. But I'm selling everything I got, um, my trailer and all my beings, because I want nothing to do with this world no more. I don't need that. Um, I don't need anything. I'm going to put my life in the Lord's hands, no matter what happens. Uh, and all my friends, I've, I'm, the Lord has been having me going around to other churches and my family, and friends and family that I've met through my life, because I pray the Lord have mercy upon them and save them, if it's even by just my testimony, which is a gift from God. Um, they always tell, they're telling me, oh, you're a fool, you're... You're gonna fall among thieves there. You're you're gonna you're gonna get there, and you're not you're gonna. There's no nine one one. I'm like, that doesn't matter. If the Lord deems that I die a horrible death, which I will die for my testimony, because the time is coming that saints will die for their testimonies, and that's when we we'll truly be tested. But we we have the patience of the saints. We know where we're going. We have certainty, and that we don't fear death. We have victory over death. 
right now in the name of Jesus. We always do because of the Lord. Only because of him, though. Nothing in us. We're not worthy, but worthy is he is only worthy. Praise God. And uh, thank you for allowing me to tell my testimony. Thank you. I'm going to let you. Thank let you, you, David. You're doing a great, and I appreciate your message, sir. Well, thank you, brother. God bless you. God bless you. Listen. Now, David may not be dressed in the attire of the 21st century, but God has somebody for everybody. He's he going to get somebody's attention. Some people are going to be drawn to the suit. Some people are going to be drawn to the burlap. But here's the deal. The message is not the clothing. The message is the fact that God is saving people who everybody is supposed to be willing to forsake all and to give all. What may seem radical to you is normal New Testament when you come to the Lord. You are willing to give all. What do you want me to do? I'll be what you want me to be. I'll go where you want me. And that part has been excluded out of the gospel. We want to come and we want God to come on our terms. But what he's doing, it may seem radical because it is it's how the gospel is, whether you, you like the uniform or not. But that's how you come. I surrender all. There's a picture of it. I surrender all to Jesus. No, we mean let me keep my vocation. Let me keep my stuff. And for some, and, and, the, and, the, and the bad part, many of us who are calling to the ministry are not willing to do that. God can never release the greatest part of his gift, which is his anointing upon us, if we value this world more than we value him. Now, there'll be at some point, I'm sure David's going to wear regular clothes somewhere. This, this is a, he said, no, but whatever. The, the point being that this is the season God has him in. Amen. But most Christians have never, ever even been in this season. That I'm willing to forsake my, he's talking about his family. Yeah. Most of them, if my family don't go, I'm not going. And so when you hear someone like me say, you got to love the Lord more than you love these people. People looking, y'all, you being mean. But it's in the Bible. You got to love me more than you love everybody. And, the, and many of our gifts are locked up behind the fact that we, we never Cross that threshold because we was afraid God was going to have us on a corner selling daisies, preaching in burlap. And for many of us, that wasn't the plan. It was just like Abraham. God said, come and sacrifice your only begotten son. And when he got ready to kill him, God said, ah, you know, psych, don't do it. He just won't see if he would. Now I know. You believe me. And a lot of us were, were called. A lot of people watching were called. But when we got to that, we said, what about my wife? What about my kids? I got this good job. I, I got too many cars. I have all these clothes. I pay good money for this. And Lord said, okay, but you will never get the anointing and purpose I have for you. You can have all that. And you can still go to heaven. It, ain't a, it is not a matter of heaven. But you will never have the best I have for you. Because for many of us, it was just a test to see. See? So, I applaud the young man. Amen. Amen. He came down here and offered free labor. And, and, and there's no indictment on us. And don't take this like I'm jumping on you. But there's not any of us who will come out here and spend that many hours to hold up a sign that the pastor said, the Lord said, do this. He said, the Lord told the pastor to put it out there. Let the pastor go out there and do it. <laughs> yeah. But he said, fish. See, if we obey God, we don't know what God going to do. And I know for a fact that a lot of people came through. And all the beep beeps, those are when you go fishing, those are bites. We've had seven people come in in some kind of way through the extended of the spirit of evangelism. Get saved, get baptized here in, in the less than two weeks. 
Just through the obedience. I was sitting out there the other day, just sitting reading my Bible. I had my headsets on. I was just sitting there, and I was so engrossed in the Word, and I couldn't hear. Man pulled around and pulled almost up to me. And then he said, oh, man, you're really in that Bible, aren't you? I said, yeah. He says, I love what you're doing out here. He says, uh, man, this is just awesome. I said, well, thank you. He says, I told the Lord that the, uh, the next time I saw you, I came through one time I saw you, but the next time I saw you, I was going to give you an offering. He says, so I came, he gave me an offering. It was a $20 offering. But he said, I came to give you an offering. Is there anything I can do? I said, just keep praying. He says, I will. Man of a whole different culture. He wasn't, he wasn't a black man, just to let you know. You know? And it was just taking 20 steps to go out the door, out there. That somebody is, oh my God, Jesus may be coming for real. That's one net. What if we all start doing what God says to net some kind of way? For it's the kingdom. It's not to build this church. It's to build his church. It's kingdom work. So we're going to pray for David. And then we'd let you sit back down. But come on up here, David. We're going to pray for you. I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Lee and uh, Benjamin, Benjamin, would you join me? Terrence, would you join me? Would you join me? We're going to pray for this young man. Oh, the, yeah. Oh, the dope house people over there, they were, they were on break making dope bags. Um, we were standing out there, and they were just laughing at him and snickering and laughing at him. But, but it was like, Lord, help the, them poor souls. If they, they needed what this young man had. Get, Regina, get the oil for me. Uh, the ter Brother Terrence, come around here. Come over here. Let's pray for him. I pray for the boldness uh, uh, the, the, to wear sackcloth again myself. Amen. Most folks will think pastor's a joke. He ain't serious. But my God, he's got his sackcloth. The Bible says there's a time to put on sackcloth and ashes. I really believe with what's in the earth that we need to go back to sometime just seeking God and crying loud. Father, as we lay our hands on David, Father, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we've heard his testimony. We know he's saved. He believes that Jesus Christ is Lord. We know, God, that you are sending him. He doesn't know where, but he's, his testimony, he's willing to die for you. He goes to Argentina or anywhere else. He's willing to give his life. But, Lord, we pray that you would protect him, that you will keep him, that you will help him. We know this is a seed right now. He is putting his life as a seed, and we, we bless the tree. From this seed. Lord, if you should tarry, we believe and we hope and we pray that from this seed, this humble beginning, that great ministry will come forth. We pray that you will put him under leadership as he go, Lord, that he won't be solo and that he won't be out there, God, lost by himself and he won't get into false doctrine and he won't get into error and he won't become a statistic. And though he is different and he is bold and the Holy Spirit is upon him and calling him, God, that you will be able to uh, manifest through him in, in the gifts and the fruit in the name of Jesus. Help him when he goes to Argentina. Oh, God, I pray, Lord, that your hand would be upon him and you would open doors and give him favor, protect his body. Lord, his family here. And anything that will pull his heartstrings would not be an issue. We ask it in the name of Jesus. We speak blessings over David. And we thank you for what David has done around here to share the gospel in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Bless you, David. Bless you. Bless you. We're going we're gonna to get his information and stay in touch with him. I ask him to do that. Benjamin, why I have you, sir, please testify and, and introduce yourself, too. Amen. This is Benjamin. God bless you. Oh, I'm sorry. Hit that button. It's a button there. Praise the Lord. My name is um, Apostle Benjamin Apena. Um, I came from Africa to this nation. Amen. Even though my father has been here 50 years earlier than I've been. 
Um, I've been going back forth until the Lord um, gave me an assignment to come into America for specific reasons. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ministry, first of all, before any other thing. And um, I've been here for some time doing what God has asked me to do. Yeah. It's been a great honor. And one of the things that, sir, I do appreciate today is this. And I'm going to say this to everybody. Um, it's so coincidental that he came this way. Yeah. And coupled with what you were saying a few minutes ago, I've, I've had preachers by the mercy and the grace of God. This is one man of God that I've heard say some unique things. Yeah. I can drive from Dallas again to hear you, sir. <laughs> Praise because God. Because scripture says put every spirit to test i'm not saying it to praise him but what came out of him if you heard him is in same sync with what he was talking about when he talks about familiarity breeds contempt and you should understand that he was speaking prophetically about the way we handle the things of the spirit and by things we handle God. Some of us cry that we don't get things from the Lord, but you don't understand. You are the reason, you are the you that is the reason why you're not getting what yes. you want. Amen. Yes. You are the hindrance to your blessings. Right. I always say this that the enemy within is stronger than the enemy we without. Tell it, brother. Say and it. You are the enemy that is within that is stopping you from getting what you need to get. Now, he came in as John the Baptist. It's prophetic. And you don't understand. He dresses like this. He's a sandal that, listen, I'm coming soon. Yes, what sir. did John come to do? John came to pave the way for coming of Christ. That's right. What is he doing now? He is preparing the way for Jesus to yes. come. Yes. And what he's talking about this morning is, you know, <laughs> family had breeds contempt. He's saying, hey, listen, change your ways. Yes. Reset your mind. You got to reverence the Lord and prepare for his coming. Amen. And this is cast in America because yes. where I come from is all of the Lord. Yes. And when you come to church, we sometimes say it's like a social club now. Yes, yes. You know, yes, we yes. come to church, we want to look good, want to dress good, want to yeah. dance good. Yeah. It, it, it's okay. I mean, I love to do that. It's okay. Yeah. But the same key word, familiarity. You can dress good and not be familiar. That's right. You can dress good and still be sober in your heart yes. and in your mind serving Christ. Mm. And I want to just say this to us all that listen, honor the gift of God in this house. Yes. Yes. I want to say it again. Amen. Honor the gift of God in this house. Amen. The reason is this. Your blessings are tied to his apron. Amen. I repeat. Your blessings are tied yes. to his apron. Yes. I will make you understand and I will drop the mic. Because one woman was crying for a child for so many years. Her name was called Hannah. Penina was a provoking tool of God to provoke her to go to God. Because if she had not provoked her so bad, she would not have gone to God reverently. Speak Holy Ghost. She kept coming to the church, but she kept having fun. But no answer. But she got so provoked one day. And when she came to God, she did not know the key to her blessing was in the mouth of the priest. Now, Eli was described already as a man who was going out of the scenes. That's why if you look at the man of God who God has put with contempt, you're looking at him from head to toe by what he wears, by what he says and what he does, and you look at him, you might miss the blessing. Yes. If you get too familiar with him and with the anointing, you can hold back yourself. Wow. That's why in Africa, we call, we call our priest Papa, not because of the fact that, hey, um, they are age-wise. No, we put that as a mark of reverence for them. We call them Dad. One of my mentors, I call him Popsy up or Pops because... He is a father over us. And that's the way we help us to see him, to honor him, and respect him. Now, let me round it up by saying this, that she was praying, but God did not say a word. 
the man who was already who was already going out came in and said, Hey, you why, why are you praying this way? Are you drunk this hour? I said, No, I ain't, I ain't drunk. No, no, no. Mm -mm. I'm doing my crying out to the Lord. That is the shortest word in scripture apart from and Jesus wept. Mm -hmm. Ellie said, It's done. Go. The same man who the Bible says eyes were deemed, the same man who could rebuke his kids, the same man who they describe as anything but what carried the blessings that brought a prophet. Yes. He said, Yes. Go. Yes. It's done. Yeah. And that was the word that brought the miracle of Samuel to life. Mm -hmm. What am I saying? If she had no reverence for the man of God, she mm. wouldn't have believed what came out of the man of God. Mm -hmm. When you don't respect and honor your pastor, you are caught off from the blessings of God. He is the channel that flows with the miracle. So when you honor him, it doesn't mean that you're worshiping him. No. You are honoring the God that is in him. If he says, let's be in church at 9 a.m., be in church at 9 a.m., let's be in church at 12, be in church at 12, be a fool in the kingdom and you'll be the wisest man to the earth. And when you're a fool, it means that you obey instructions, you take care of the ordinances of God in the house of the Lord. And I believe that you will take the seriously we all will do, and we all will stand with Papa, and we all will say that God's work will move on and we will do a great work, we will obey God. We will not go to God with great contempt. We will yes, honor God in every yes, way that we yes. should honor. Praise God. Thank you, sir. Amen. Thank you, Apostle Benjamin. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. And this is my first time meeting him. You met him the same time I met him. Amen. I knew him by the Spirit when we shook hands. But praise the Lord. Uh, we are living in that time when God's going to bring us together. And, I, and the word that he said uh, was not for you to honor me as in my name, but the gift. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And uh, I, I can rejoice because I heard the voice of an apostle and they speak different. They don't speak like pastors. Uh, if you, after a while, you will see what I'm saying. They're always laying foundation. Amen. Going to get to know him more. And we hope to see him, praise God, more. Let's go to 1 John. I mean, John chapter 1, verse 29. John chapter 1, verse 29. God bless all of you. Amen. Thank you for your prayers. Pray over your offering. We're not going to receive it now, but pray over it as we're going. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're going to pray over it. Pray over it. Amen. Let's rebuke the spirit of Creflo Dollar. And I don't mean that anything negative about Creflo, but don't let it be. Because see, some of you didn't study it. You, you, li you listened to the YouTube and the, and the hubbub. But if you know for yourself, you're not going to let. You want to give as much as you possibly can in the kingdom work. Because God is not mocked what's over man. So God is never going to let you out give him. And, um, and we don't, and you know for a fact that we don't beat you up put a lot of pressure on you about money over here, but I probably have done you a disservice by not doing so. Yeah. Yes. Assuming that you are mature and you want to be blessed, you want to walk in covenant with God. Amen. Amen. But giving will move God, Amen. too. Yes, it does. You know, it's a lot of bad stuff. You got to stay off of the internet unless you know what you're looking at. But I pity all them people that were shouting, God will give you the wisdom on what to do if you sincerely uh, want to be blessed. There were many years before I became uh, a person that uh, does what I do today that uh, I thought my money came from the job. 
And they couldn't pay me enough on them jobs. I lived up to the dime and beyond. Your money, your job is your seed. That's all your job is, where you get your seed. It ain't where you make your living. Because they don't pay you enough to make a living. Because you got caviar wishes. Yes. And, and your job is paying you tuna fish. I don't care what you're making. If, if you're fortunate enough to make $300,000 a year, that's tuna fish because you still thinking caviar. You can only afford a rowboat and you want a yacht. That's just human nature. So you need to understand that your job is where you get your seed. He gives seed to the sower and bread for your food. So you don't eat up your seed. You have to learn that principle. Don't let this world and a bunch of people who will take, uh, get you off. You can't fly a $65 million jet on the backs of these people who don't believe in sowing. So I already knew. When you saying that don't tithe no more, throw away my books, well, you got another plan. I knew what the plan was, but I was waiting to see the rest of the story. And that's going from tithing to generous giving. That's generous giving. <laughs> giving it all. And a lot of folk ain't, ain't want to do that. Generous giving, if you got 50 pair of shoes, give away 35 pair of them. Start a rule. Every pair you had in war this year got to go. That's generous. Okay. Suits and dresses that you had in war can't get into. That's generous. Don't give them the goodwill. Go give them to somebody. 